All right, tech number four. Having a little trouble getting this video done. So, welcome to the farm. And I'm going to try to make this video short. I keep going way too long. We're going to talk about catching critters in this video. So, the stuff we deal with around here the most are raccoons, possums, fox, coyotes, occasionally a skunk. We've had a few bobcats in the past, not very common, and occasionally some bears um, every few years. Not something we typically deal with right, you know, right here. So in this video, the, the two main things we'll be dealing with talking about are possums and raccoons, and then also I'm going to touch on fox and coyotes. Those are the four we deal with the most. So the most effective way to deal with any of these predators are to just shoot them on site if they're coming in to your coop or in around your house which we have to do a lot, unfortunately. But once they decide to leave the woods, leave their, their domain, and they want to come into our domain where our livestock are and where we've invested money into you know, poultry and different things like that, then it creates a problem. They get into the feed, uh, horse feed, the chicken feed. They'll tear bags open. They'll chew holes through trash cans. Uh, that becomes a problem. It starts costing us money, and there's no reason they need to be coming in here. And they have plenty of food, plenty of things they can forage for out in the woods. So, if we can't shoot them on site, because obviously I can't wait out here on my porch all night uh, for a possum to come, we have what's called a have a heart trap. So, this is pretty basic design. You got a door here at the front that's spring loaded, and this door goes up like this, and there is a little trip plate back here. And if you can see my finger on this long uh, little metal uh, rod here, that goes up and it locks underneath. There's a little catch up here where that locks underneath the door hold the door up and as the animal goes inside the trap here and as it crawls up in there it's usually looking for some kind of bait here that we'll place at the back of the trap uh, they'll step on this little trip plate here and that closes the uh, the door and then this bar here plus this little uh, green tab up here will keep that door from opening back up although the last raccoon I had in here was pretty big and uh, he actually bent the door the door right here from banging into that so much so, the bait we use, typically I will use sardines or uh, canned cat food. Uh, today we're going to be using uh, salmon dinner in gravy. These are like 69 cents at Tractor Supply or maybe even less. Uh, sardines are also very cheap. So this is what they have. I don't have sardines at Tractor Supply, so I got this. Anything that's got a pretty pungent odor, most canned cat food has a pretty good pungent odor. Anything that they would uh, want to come in and eat. So a can like this is good because it kind of contains the bait. A lot of times people will put like a chicken leg or something, just throw it in the back of the cage. That works, but then it gets, gets all over your, your, uh, your cage. And sometimes they can reach through and, and, and grab something like that and pull it to the side of the cage and eat it through the cage. A little bit harder with a can like this. Some people will wire these cans down, put some holes in the bottom of it, and they'll wire it to the bottom so that it can't slide around. I'll usually give it a shot without wiring it down, and then if, it, if something is coming and reaching through, and grabbing the can or pull it to the side, eat it. If, it's, if that becomes a problem, then I'll wire the can down. But sometimes I get lucky and the animal goes in there in a first shot and, uh, you know, for the for the bait in there and sets the trap off and I don't have to worry about wiring it down. So we are going to go, I'm going to go ahead and set this cage here. Also, you want your trigger back here to be kind of a hair trigger. So I'm going to set it pretty tight, you know, pretty far up in there so it doesn't close while I'm carrying it up to where I'm going to put it, and then uh, and then I'll adjust the, the trigger up here so that it only takes a little bit of pressure. You don't want too light because then if they're crawling through as they're banging the cage, it can set the trap off and their body might be under the door and then they'll scoot back out. They haven't, they got to get the whole way in the cage for the door to close completely. Got our bait in there. A couple other things to think about while you're setting a, a trap like this is your location. You want to make sure you put it somewhere on fairly level ground. Oh, see what I mean? Just set that off. So you want fairly level ground somewhere where they feel like they can kind of sneak in. So I'm, I've seen critters come right along the side of here when it's dark. They'll come right along the side of this and they sneak around the stone. They kind of want to move from cover to cover. There's something that they can kind of hide behind. So they'll come right down the fence row here. They come through some of these ditches. There's different pipes. I've seen them crawling in there. They generally aren't just going to come through the wide open and through the middle of your yard. So try to put it somewhere where it's going to be in their path. They're going to kind of have to stumble across it. 
The reason why I'm putting this trap out here is because, well, yesterday evening, actually it wasn't even dark, yesterday evening my wife spotted a raccoon on that porch right there. Not sure what he was going for, maybe the trash can, um, maybe something down below. And my mom, just got done feeding the horses. And that means we got predators coming in close to the house, which is not good. So normally I wouldn't set a trap close to the house like this. I would probably keep the trap, you know, back in the woods somewhere, somewhere away, because you don't want to attract predators in to where they are not already coming to. So they're, they're not already coming into the barn and around our house. I'm not going to try to bring them in here by setting a trap with bait. But if you already have them coming in, they're already like, you know, case in point, last night one showed up. If you already have them coming in, then it doesn't really matter whether you set a trap here or we set a trap out in the woods. That's just kind of my take on it. Uh, I know some people set up, if, even if they, are, they don't have predators coming in, just as a preemptive thing, they'll set a trap up next to their chicken coop. A lot of times that'll bring an animal in uh, when you didn't already have one coming. So... I'm gonna set hook this on the sun's getting kinda of low. I'm not really sure how so this is gonna work. Drop the phone. We're gonna try that right there. See if that works. Sun's kind of glaring there a little bit, but that's what I get for doing it late in the day. So I've got that set pretty good. I feel pretty good about that. Got my baits about where I want it in the back of the cage. Show a little picture here. So you kind of want a nice hair trigger right there so that it doesn't take very much pressure to set this thing off. You want the bait kind of in the middle. If it's too close to the back, they'll just reach through and scoop it out with their hands. Same thing on this side. Also, you don't want it too close to the trip plate because if it gets up, under, uh, up underneath here, it'll keep the trip plate from going off. So that's set. That's good there. Feel pretty good about that. So that's the two things I want to talk about in this video a little bit are some cute coop security how to keep predators from getting into your coop. And the last thing I want to talk about is kind of how to deal with some of these predators. So I'm real quick just going to go through a couple things I do to keep my coop nice and secure. So talking about gaps and stuff. A gap like this is not really a concern for a raccoon or possum. A snake might be able to get in there. I haven't really had any snakes get after my chicks, but can't say it wouldn't happen. A gap like this is a good example of something that a raccoon or a possum could easily crawl through without any problem. So if a raccoon or possum got in here, unfortunately, definitely a raccoon would kill all of these chicks, probably kill all of my my um, regular adult birds. There wouldn't be much left. They're going to get in like this killing, feeding frenzy kind of thing. And um, it's a lot of carnage. It's I've seen it several times, not in this coop specifically, but growing up and stuff we would have them get into our coops and there would be nothing left in the morning so having good secu secure coop is is uh very important so this i'm not too worried about these gaps here because those are inside my coop so as long as i lock my coop up which i got my door split right now but a good sturdy lock like like this one here is kind of like a, uh, i can even put a carabiner or something on that to reinforce that uh, same thing over here i got good sturdy locks and then I, when i locked it when i closed the door I put this uh, carabiner through to keep them from getting in there because they will get in and they will go get into your feed bins. Like I said, they'll chew through a plastic barrel. They can get lids off. They're uh, very good at uh, getting after something that they want, usually some kind of food. So I have locks here. You know, make sure they got a wire. You want to put wire over all your openings. Um, I had a po two possums in here the other day, different different times and I had to take care of both of them. One was under the coop and one was eating out of this little feed shed right there. So here's kind of another method. I just take this little board here, put a screw in the middle, use that to keep them from being able to pull these doors open. Um, I also have wire on my clean out doors in there so that if I want to leave this door open, they still can't get in there. These latches are not very good. Um, I like a locking latch. These are just a regular latch. They work okay. But if a raccoon got jingling around with this, he'd probably get that open and easily get the door open. And then my ducks and turkeys are right there inside the coop at night. So the type of latch I prefer is one like this with a little locking piece on it. So you got to push that up and then pull up on that. Even if he were to jingle this, so if the, if the coop door was closed, this is an example. So if it was like that, even if he were to, to jingle that, be playing with that and pulling on the door, he's not going to be able to get that open. But these other ones without the... The locking piece on there 
are a little bit more vulnerable for a raccoon to get open. So same thing, I got wire over where my, uh, my you can see my vent fan blows out there, I got wire on all these. The more secure you can get your coop, the less likely you're gonna be dealing with predators getting in. So the last thing I wanna talk about is dealing with these predators once you catch them. So, I know a lot of people I see a raccoon and they think, oh man, that thing's so cute. Like, how could you ever kill something like that or shoot something like that? And I agree, I do not like killing animals unless it is for meat to put in my freezer or protection of my, my, my animals that I'm raising. There's really only two ways to deal with predators once you've caught them. You either release them or you have to shoot them. There's no other options. My issues with releasing them are this. One, you don't, if you release that animal a few miles down the road, that animal probably is going to make it back, and you probably will be dealing with that animal again. And he probably is going to wise up to your have a heart trap, and he's probably not going to go in there next time. So now you have an animal that is wise to the methods you're using to catch him, and he's going to avoid those, and now he's going to probably go straight for your chickens or straight for your feed or something else because um, he's going to steer clear of what caught him last time. So that's one issue. You take that animal a little further down the road, drop him off, uh, you know, on, and on, on a piece of land, you're now cr potentially creating a problem for somebody else. So someone who may not have a raccoon problem or a possum problem or something like that, you're now dumping off something off onto their property, and now that raccoon might be getting into their trash or going after their animals or getting into their cat food or, you know, that they keep in their garage or something like that. They're going to be going, now you've created a problem for somebody else. So yeah, that's great for you, and it's really nice that you have released this animal and given him another chance, but you've also now created a, potentially created a problem for somebody else to deal with. And so, to me, that's not really, you know, that's not really fixing the problem. The other option is to try to relocate that animal to somewhere where it's, there's no people, you know, it's, you're not creating another problem, it's far enough away, he's not going to come back, but that is just not feasible for me. I'm not going to drive... 45 minutes, an hour to state game lands or to a national forest and then, you know, release this animal out there. Let alone, I don't even know what the rules are as far as catching animals and then releasing them like that on state state lands. So maybe that's, a, you're allowed to do it. I don't really know. I didn't look it up because I'm not going to be driving an hour. You know, that's that's not economical for, you know, my predator problem is to be relocating them. So the only other option is to shoot, shoot these animals. It sounds a little cold-hearted, but I will say this, for anyone who is thinking about starting a, a backyard flock, anyone who is thinking about getting some, uh, some birds or something like that, the first time a raccoon gets in your coop and kills every single one of your birds, just because they get in this like killing frenzy, like state of mind, and they just have to kill everything, you will probably not look at that raccoon and think, oh man, that was so cute, you know, raccoon from from Bambi or, you know, some, something that, something like that. You're going to have a new appreciation for the killing machine that that thing is. Same thing with possums. I've seen possums come in and decimate uh, animals. They don't usually kill everything, but they will come in and, and, and kill a few birds. Uh, same thing with a fox or a coyote. These animals, they are called predators for a reason. And uh, they have the, you know, the teeth and the claws, things to come in and do a lot of damage in, in a short amount of time. So you tend to have a new appreciation for what these animals are, and they're not these cute, cuddly little things that you see, you know, hand-raised raccoon on YouTube or whatever. That's, that's not what these wild animals are. Also, I know how many of these animals are out in our woods. I have trail cams everywhere. And I know that we have tons of raccoons, tons of possums. And so they're, if they start coming in here, either they are looking for a quick meal, which this is not the place to look for it, or they're becoming overpopulated and they're kind of pushing into other areas, areas that maybe you know, there's more human activity and they're not, there's not enough room for them in the woods. Which in that case, the population needs to be taken back a little bit anyways, if you're overpopulated. I would say right now we probably have an overpopulation of raccoons based off what I'm seeing in my trail cams and at my feeders, I am getting loads and loads of raccoons, which means there's too many. Um, and they're starting to venture in looking for other food sources, which are my grain barrels, our feet, our feed over in our barn, my chickens, things like that. And that is creating a problem. They stay in the woods. I'll leave them alone. I don't have too much issue if they're out there. Once they start coming in here, I have to start dealing with them. 
Same thing with coyotes, fox, possums. So the last two possums that came in, if they would have stayed out in the woods, I would have been fine with that. I probably wouldn't have gone out after them or anything like that. But once they are in underneath my chicken coop trying to get my birds, that's created a problem. Like I said, releasing them isn't necessarily a feasible option for me and for most people that are have a similar setup. The other thing with possums is they carry a disease called EPM, which is very harmful for horses. We've had a couple horses actually got EPM here. And so possums in our fields and in our barns and in our paddocks around the horse feed, around the where the horses are eating hay, is not a good thing. There can be a transmission of EPM, which is a, uh, a disease that horses get. Um, I believe it's like a neuro, acts like their neurological system, something like that. I'm not really an ex expert on it. But we've had a couple horses that have been pretty close to death's door because they got EPM. And if it's untreated, they will kill the horse. So they're killing not only small livestock, they're also killing large livestock now because they're coming in. So unfortunately, the only way to deal with that is I have to get rid of those possums. I have to shoot those possums. Um, and hopefully the remaining possums on the farm will stay out in the woods where they belong. They'll stay away from uh, the livestock, from the horses, and from the the, uh, you know, the areas where we're keeping feed and hay and things like that. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something about uh, setting traps, using the have a heart trap, and uh, securing your coop as well as what to do if you do catch some predators. So I know it's not always the most fun thing, um, you know, catching predators and then and having to deal with them afterwards, but it is a necessity. It is something that you will have to deal with if you have chickens or any kind of poultry or even large livestock. They'll come in for the feed um, and try to get into your grain barrels or your grain bins and things like that. So you will probably have to deal with a predator or some of these critters, as I called them, uh, at some point. If you're doing any kind of homesteading or uh, you know, a farm like this or even a backyard flock of chickens. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any other hints or tips or little tricks that maybe I didn't mention in this video, please reach out to me. Um, you can post something in the comments or on Facebook. You can uh, message me directly. And I love, I'm always looking for new ways to do this, better ways to do things. So I'm, I'm open to any ideas. If you've got any questions or things that didn't make sense and you want a little more information on it or want me to do another video on something specific, please let me know. I'm always open to that as well. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Uh, I know I always do when I'm uh, doing these videos and try to perfect the, uh, the technique and the different things we use here around the farm. So hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you next time.